Riddle me this. Why did the oldest structures in the world of ancient history, why are they the most precise and the most well-made? And why did they get worse? Hi guys, I'm Johanna, welcome back to my channel. I'm a massive ancient history nerd and I make videos talking about history. I've had a couple of people request a specific video and I thought it was a good idea, so I'm gonna do it. I, for one, have uh, a lot of skeptards in my family and they do not believe at all there is anything funny about the historical timeline and it really is frustrating for me because for me in my eyes I can just see so many weird holes and gaps and things that just do not make sense. So history has taught us that human beings have been around for hundreds of thousands of years yet they didn't seem to do anything apart from be hunter-gatherers for all of those hundreds of thousands of years and they only started to make civilization when we could find evidence for it around 8,000 BC 7,000, but really cities started around 6,000 BC. And before then there was absolutely nothing. Nothing could have existed because hunter-gatherers did not have the technology or the knowledge or the wisdom to be able to make things like agriculture, farming, cities, kings, and all of that. However, the academic timeline is starting to get a couple of major holes in it. Major hole number one, Gobekli Tepe. Gobekli Tepe was discovered in the 90s just by a farmer. He noticed that uh, this piece of rock was just sticking out the ground. And when they dug down, they realized, oh, it's actually like a megalithic temple. A very, very old megalithic temple, and they've only excavated about 10% of it so far there. So there's still so much under there that ha could literally be like the key to human history, but they don't have the funding to excavate the whole thing right now, which I'm like, <laughs> uh, Elon Musk. You can't carbon date stone, it's, it's like impossible. You can only carbon date organic matter. However, Gobekli Tepe was deliberately covered up. They could actually date when the soil was squished on all around this area. So they could date the soil that the stones were on. That makes sense. And when they carbon dated it, they found out that this structure was buried 9,600 BC. It's like 11,000 years ago, this thing was covered. It could have been built thousands of years before that. It was just covered 9,600 BC, which literally outdates. It's like twice as old as Stonehenge. That's how crazy. And not only is it twice as old as Stonehenge, it's also way more high tech. The stones are heavier, they're taller, they're covered in ornately carved images of animals, constellations, humans, there's statues. This all existed thousands of years before the academics said that civilizations did. And the academics will say, oh, well, the hunter-gatherers made it. Well, if they made this huge, huge megalithic temple structure, how did they have the time? If you are a hunter-gatherer, all of your time has to go on catching your dinner and making your family and hiding from like wild animals and stuff. You don't have the infrastructure. Gobekli Tepe, this temple was made by organized people. You would have to organize workers, you would have to feed them, you would have to have incredibly skilled people that would have to spend time away from hunter-gathering and spend a lifetime learning constellations and learning about ley lines and learning how to carve a correct cheetah. I don't know if there's a cheetah. The whole thing just screams that we've got something wrong in the timeline and that we all need to go back to the drawing board and rethink human history. Recently, as in, in the last few years, they made a discovery that literally pushed back the beginning of Homo sapiens arriving on this planet by 100,000 years. They've pushed it back so that we arrived in our physical form, DNA all the same, Homo sapiens arrived over 300,000 years. So previously they thought it was 200,000 years and in one discovery it jumped to 300,000 years. We just gained 100,000 years of human history and you're still telling me that these people did nothing until 6,000 BC? It just doesn't fly with me, Susan. I just feel like we're missing something and we're not, we're not keeping our minds open to the possibility that there might have been loads of cycles of civilizations coming and going over hundreds of thousands of years. And who's to say that we are not the fourth, fifth, 39th cycle of human civilization? Who's to say that? Well, a lot of people. <laughs> actually. <laughs>
As well as Gobekli Tepe, there is also another temple structure that I think is in the Philippines, which uh, I'm going to, I've forgotten the name, forgotten the name, and I'll put the name here because I've forgotten it. It's like Ganang Patang. That wasn't it. I'll put the name. And that has been carbon dated because originally they carbon dated the top of the structure and it was about 2000 BC. Um, but as they dug down deeper and they could carbon date deeper and found more and more structures, uh, the, the dating on this site could potentially be 20,000 years old. Interesting that as soon as those numbers though started to get significantly longer, the, the government there started to stop the dig and stop the funding. And that happens a lot when anything, uh, whenever like a discovery starts to show that something doesn't really fit with the standard timeline, suddenly all the budget disappears. And I just think that's a really big red flag why governments aren't at the forefront of finding out the real truth about human history. I find that really weird. But it does make total sense because if you look at things from an economic, a social and religious standpoint, people do not want human history to change. The timeline does need to fit a lot of religious narrative, a lot of social narrative. And I think that it would be extreme if we had to write, rewrite all of the religions in the world. And a lot of governments are still run by religion and I'm not knocking religion. <laughs> I just think that it's um, restricting sometimes to the potential opening yourself to thinking about history because we have to stick to the, the guidelines and we have to make it all fit with the original text. For, for religion. Okay, for anyone's like, oh, we couldn't possibly be older than this because, you know, like, where's the evidence? Where's, where's the evidence of stuff? I don't think people are understanding quite how long, like 12,000 years are. If you put a Tesla car just out in the world um, and you, it would be completely gone within 12,000 years, completely gone. Um, same with a lot of structures. There is so, buildings would be, would collapse and go 12,000 years, 20,000 years. Even, even like 8,000 years, we do have some sites in the world which are literally right now being argued with science as to why they could potentially be older. In, in the last few years, Google Earth, uh, drones, satellites, we are able to look at the world from a very different place than we were 20, 10, 20 years ago. We're starting to be able to get really good information and a lot more scientific data. We can measure things now with lasers, laser precision, LIDAR technology. And when we're going back to these ancient sites and people are scanning the, the measurements of these ancient prehistoric megalithic structures, some seriously cool data is coming out that is kind of blowing my mind. The Barabar Caves in India, I saw a documentary on it. They have LIDAR scanned the inside of these stone caves built into the rock face. The precision and the measurements and the smoothness, it is precise to like within 0.01 of a millimeter. Basically, it's, it's almost impossible for the human eye and the human hand to make that kind of surface, to make that kind of precision into stone. Also, you come up against a problem. Uh, if, 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 if people could only historically have been using hand tools, their eyes and their hand tools, how did they get it so smooth? How did they get it so precise? If the human eye can't work to that level of detail, what can? It, it, it's a huge, big question mark in the history of our world. We, we have the remaining artifacts of some very precise, crazy science-defying objects or structures but we don't have the evidence to how they made it. There's a big hole there. Personally, from what I've seen when I went to Saqqara, going into the Serapium, again, there are big questions in the world that need to be answered and they don't fit within the timeline of human history. Uh, in Saqqara, they found thousands and thousands of stone-made pottery. No, not pottery. It's exactly not pottery. Stone-made vases, and dishes that literally we have no idea with modern technology how they did it. The schist disc, um, the, the vases, they're full in the Cairo Museum, they are full of them everywhere. And when you speak to somebody who is a stonemason or somebody who works uh, in this field, they their minds are blown because they can't understand how a civilization who could only have copper chisels, and that's all we have in the historical record, all we have been able to find in history is copper chisels for that time period. And that does not 
scientifically 100% this has been verified it is not possible to make these artifacts from the tools that we have found in the historical record it's not possible there is a huge gap in human history where we have objects structures that just do not make sense to the timeline the way that we have it and we need to be working out how they did it. How did they do it? Or let, let's step back and like just brainstorm this for a minute because it does not make sense. In the same way that we have a problem with a lot of the artifacts and how they were made, it's the same with a lot of structures. When you look back at the oldest stuff in the world, the oldest, oldest structures, the oldest statues and temples and buildings, they are the heaviest, the most precisely cut. And then as time kind of progresses, we don't get better at building things bigger. We, we build them worse and we build them smaller, which I don't think people know. And I think if people knew that, riddle me this, why did the oldest structures in the world of ancient history, why are they the most precise and the most well-made? And why do they get worse? Surely, if you look at anything else in the modern day, in our civilization, we start off with prototypes. Aeroplanes started off with these little rickety wooden things, and then look at the jumbo jets we have now. iPhones, look at the first ever iPhone, or a Blackberry, and then look at the evolution of a mobile phone, or a TV, or a car. Yet in the past, it went the other way. The buildings became less impressive, uh, they didn't last as long, they could only build them out of lots of smaller bricks. Whereas the ancient, ancient prehistory people, they could lift and carve and work with stone in a way that we do not even know how they did it. I can't sleep at night knowing that this is a question just staring us in the face. Another massive factor is when you actually look at the native stories from the area, the native uh, traditions and oral stories in China, they date China going back further than the academic timeline gives it, them credit for. Same with India. The Indian records go back way further than we will give them credit for. Uh, the native oral tradition of Egypt, same thing. They have a king's list that goes back for thousands and thousands of years, yet for some reason, we literally draw a line and we say that all the kings that were below 6,000 BC were historical and anybody on the king list above was mythological. Simply because everything has to align with that sort of religious timeline. And if it doesn't fit, it becomes a myth of history. And if it does fit, it becomes history history. And I find that utterly ridiculous. I saw the wall, I saw the wall for myself. I saw the king's list and I couldn't believe how many kings were on it. And when you say, well, who was that one? They go, oh, that was just a myth, that one. But the one 10 below, that was a real one. The fact that every single ancient civilization in the entire world, they all have the same or very similar origin stories and not one of them claims to have invented anything. Not one civilization take any claim for inventing maths, agriculture, inventing a kingship, inventing civilization. They, none of them say, oh yeah, that was us. All of them say the same thing, was that they were taught it by someone else. All of them. And we don't, we don't think anything of that. I find that really weird. Um, some cultures say they were taught by visitors, some say they were taught by the gods that visited, some people talk about the big people, the, the Nephilim, the wise ones, the seven sages. They all have different names, but it's the same story worldwide, that they were just living their world, they were being hunter-gatherers, and then people arrived, visitors arrived, and they taught them how to do this stuff. And it kind of makes sense. This is what I think the timeline of human history was. I think that throughout the hundreds of thousands of years of human history, we have always risen to that point where we have made civilizations and we've made cultures and these cultures have evolved and they've grown. We live in a very cataclysmic atmosphere. We don't feel like it is because for the last 10,000 years, we've been all right. But science is starting to pull up that we live on a cataclysmic cycle. Which is kind of terrifying if you think about it because the thing about a circle is that what goes around comes around and it will happen again. So everyone knows about the dinosaurs being destroyed in the comet that hit the dinosaurs, like we all 
we all know that one. But did you know that there is growing evidence that about 13,000 years ago, Earth was hit by another round of comets during the Ice Age called the Younger Dryas. And this is looking like the reason why there was a huge spike in temperature around that time, as seen by the scientific graph. So these comets, or even fractured bits of comet, whacked into the Earth, completely melted instantaneously and obliterated the ice sheet that was covering most of North America, turned the ice into a huge cataclysmic tsunami that spread over about two thirds of the world, kind of destroying literally everything. And it might account for why every single ancient civilization has a cataclysmic flood story in their origin texts. There is a thing called the Torrid Stream, and it is literally like a belt of flying asteroids and comet shrapnel. And we fly through it as a planet two times a year, every June and every November. So two times a year, we're just like cracking on with our daily life and watching Netflix, and we are literally flying through an asteroid belt of horrendously sized shrapnel of comets. And any one of them, if they hit us, we would be utterly destroyed in cataclysms worse than any disaster movie you will ever watch. And we have no idea about it. However, historically we do because people have tried to warn us. And the reason why, I've spoken about this in, in, in many videos, but the reason why I got hooked on this subject and the reason why I believe it is because when I look at the science of the Younger Dryas Comet impact and I look at the dates of when that happened, the dates align perfectly with when Gobekli Tepe, remember that, beginning of the vid, the megalithic temple site in Turkey, it got deliberately buried exactly around the same time as the comet impact happened in the world. So it is my belief that people were trying to preserve their history, they were trying to preserve their knowledge, most important information for us, and they deliberately buried the temple because they were trying to pass that knowledge on. And it was only thousands and thousands and thousands of years later that we've discovered it. And we still haven't even looked at the whole thing. When you read Plato's Atlantis, and you look at the story of that and the story of Solon, who traveled, who was a historian. He traveled to Egypt around 600 BC and he asked for the history of and the origin story of the Egyptians. And the Egyptian origin story told to them at the time by the priests of Egypt were that Egypt was a colony that survived a huge cataclysm where everybody was destroyed in a day and a night. Well, not everybody, because obviously there was a few survivors. And it happened 9,000 years ago. 9,000 years plus 600 equals 9,600 BC, the same year that Gobekli Tepe was covered up for some reason unknown, and the same year that we have the science that a comet has hit the world and caused huge cataclysms. Thank you very much. Boom, 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 boom. That is enough for me to go, okay, I do not believe the academic story timeline that I was taught in school. I'm starting to believe this new version of events that we are way older than we ever perceived we were. We are on a cycle of civilization, not a linear line. And for me, that makes so much more sense. And all of the question marks that we have in history, how do we have these structures that we don't know how to move? How do we have these objects that we don't know how to make? Why is the oldest stuff that we can find the most precise and the, um, the most higher tech? How does that make sense? It, because it's from the cycle from before. These are remnants of a previous civilization that we have not acknowledged. Are you still with me? If you are, amazing. Um, Try share this, hopefully, share this with your friends and your family and the people who are a bit s skeptical um, of anything because they've just seen ancient aliens. Right, um, good news is I've got some really cool videos. I have been given special access to Stonehenge for the solstice. So I'm gonna get right up in there for you for if you've always wanted to visit Stonehenge and have a right, good old look because you're not allowed to go right up to them anymore. But I've been given permission. I'm going to bring you guys all with me, so keep your eyes peeled, uh, press that like button, send me a comment, um, it really, really helps if you can just share my channel around, because then I can just reach so many more people. Lovely, I've literally talked for like 40 minutes, so I'm going to stop. Um, thank you, thank you. I will sit, what am I even saying? I will see you guys in the next video. Happy hunting.